Hi, good people. It's Amy from Savor Salvage Scent, and I hope this finds you well. For those of you who are new to the channel, this mostly focuses on all things fragrance or perfume related with an occasional other DIY project. For those of you returning, thank you so much. Um, if you haven't considered it yet, I hope that you will click the red subscribe button so that we can stay in touch and that you will get notifications when I post videos. So thanks for all to all of you for being here. Today I wanted to talk to you quickly about a new to me uh, niche house, perfume house out of um, Oregon called House of Gloy. It's um, spelled H-A-U-S and um, the name G-L-O-I. I learned about this house through, um, I've I heard about it uh, a few times over the, like the last maybe year or two on the channels, including um, Comfort and Sense, I love her. Um, also Casually Fragrant, I think she is, has such an interesting collection and uh, collects, I would say, like really interesting gourmands. And then Sarah Mays has talked about um, this house as well. And when I look them up, they just seem to have some key notes that I feel like a lot of houses don't kind of work with much anymore. So I was really excited. I made my first um, purchase and I want to share with you some of the things that I got because I think it's quite an interesting array of um, they make not only perfumes, but also bath and, and kind of body and home products. Um, and I also immediately placed a second order within a few weeks after trying these. So I think that says a lot. Um, a few of these products I'm already just totally deeply in love with. So I want to share them with you. Um, another thing that I'll say about this house that's really great is they take wonderful care in packaging the items so they look nice. Um, also in sending them, they have beautiful, wonderful, thoughtful packaging. And also they're super affordable, like really, really, really affordable um, as compared to other kind of independent and niche houses. So lots of great things to say about them. Um, I'm going to dive right in and talk to you about um, the different products I ordered and give you a quick review of each. Um, so um, I, the first thing I ordered was a group of samples. You can buy samples on their own. I think they're, gosh, they look like they're two mil. They might be one, but they're generous. Um, these you can order for $3 a piece or in sets. Um, so I ordered four of those, actually three. And I think they, third, they threw a fourth one in, which is really nice. I ordered a few of their 15 milliliter perfume oil, or sorry, five milliliter perfume oils that run $15, so they're this size. Um, I ordered hair oil that comes in a two um, ounce bottle. I believe that's $12. Um, I ordered a um, pumpkin butter. So they have these, it sounds like very, very emollient, um, kind of body butters. Um, and this, I ordered just a two ounce to try. It's still very generous for kind of a sample size. These run only, I think four or four fifty, which is amazing. And then if you go into the six ounce, which is like kind of the typical size we're used to, um, those are only, I think 10. So that that's a really, really phenomenal price. Um, they also have exfoli exfoliating like a sugar scrub and they have a bubbling scrub as well. They're around the same price. I think they're around four, four fifty for two ounce. And then if you get into six ounce, they're $10. And then last but not least, they have, um, I think alcohol based perfumes, one ounce for just $30, which is incredible. So I'm going to start, um, actually with, I think my most favorite things that I've tried so far. So I lucked out, this is a blind buy, but when I saw what the notes were, I thought, oh my gosh, I have to have it. What if they run out? So this is called Lavender Pear Anise Cake. Oh, everything I like. So there's a cake I used to make. It's a uh, Middle Eastern cake that is, I think, almond based. It's very vanilla and it has crushed anise seeds in it. I love um, licorice and anise. I know it's not for everybody. It's really hard to find it in perfumes anymore. So when I find it, I'm delighted. 
Um, I also love the smell of fresh pear. And I like lavender some of the time, although again, a lot not a lot of people work with it anymore. This is such an incredible combination because it to me is one of those intersectional perfumes where it is gourmand, but not just gourmand. It's not um, the aniseed and um, the kind of warmth of the cake and the lavender makes it a little herbal too. So it's not just, let's say a representation of a cake. It's got something much, much more. Um, if you love anise, I would say this is an absolute win. Um, it is light in the lavender, but it's definitely still there. And because it's got this gourmand quality, it doesn't get too, what would I say, too aromatic or herbal or medicinal. So it is just, to me, this is a perfect scent. Um, I've worn it like crazy. I've only had it for a few weeks. I don't know if you could see. I've, I've worn this probably four or five days. Oh, it's so good. And I went online and I'm sorry to report that I think I purchased their last bottle yesterday. So after testing a few of these things, I had to purchase a few more things and have them sent. I was afraid they would run out. But I have a feeling like other independent houses, things probably are made in small batches and come and go. And so I would say, if this sounds interesting to you, put it on your list and watch for it. Um, so lavender pear anise cake, again, $30. And I think they even have sales and promotions occasionally. So this is about the best price you'll ever get for an independent or a niche perfume. Just great. Um, okay. Let's see, second, oh gosh, I love a lot of these things. Um, I'm going to talk to you about, they have hair oils that are again two ounce and they run $12, great price. I wanted to try a scent with it without getting into a $30 perfume to see if I liked it. Um, I fell in love with this candle this fall that smelled like um, buttered popcorn. I have tested other bath or body products and perfumes that smell like butter that never quite really smell like butter. They smell really, to me, chemical. And also I love the smell of fresh popcorn, but when people imitate it, it to me, it smells much more like bread or it never quite, it doesn't smell right in perfume to me. Um, this is a whole nother animal. <laughs> this is called Ghost Puffs. I'm gonna read to you their description quickly. Um, orbs of buttered popcorn and marshmallow goo on a wooden stick. So um, this is gorgeous. Um, I, as you can see, do not have a lot of hair anymore. I cut my hair all off a few weeks or a few months ago, but I'm gonna use this in the bath as a bath oil or maybe even on my skin as well. And it, it smells exactly as it's described. It smells like fresh. It actually smells to me like caramely popcorn. Um, and you definitely get like a vanilla tone and while they say it's on a wooden stick, that's faint, but it's enough that this doesn't just smell um, juvenile. It smells really warm, wonderful, cozy. So Ghost Puffs, and they have this in many, many other um, products. And, and while I talk to you about the products I ordered, I should mention quickly, they also have, um, they have soaps, with whipped soaps. They have, I think they have linen sprays. They have a lot of things that I have not ordered yet. Um, but anyways, can't say enough good stuff about ghost puffs. Love that. And this is such a generous size. I, I will have that for some time, I'm sure. Um, let's see next. Um, there, I ordered for a friend, um, a sample of a scent that is one of their most popular. Apparently it's called blood orange marshmallow. In case you can't tell, I like the smell of marshmallow. Um, and I love blood orange and my, one of my best friend's loves anything orange. Um, I ordered the sugar exfoliant in the two ounce size and a sample of the oil. It's great. It seems to be popular on their site. And then when I look for, you know, videos or anything on YouTube, people tend to really like this. I am a citrus lover and I have a lot of citrus for forward scents already. Um, this is great. I'm going to be honest. For me, it's not quite as complex as something I would be looking for. Now, you can play that on the other side of the coin and say it's an easy wear for that reason. Like, this is really easy to love and um, definitely smells like blood orange and marshmallow. Really, really nice. Um, but I have other things I think that would kind of quench that thirst for me. And um, But I do think my friend will like this a lot. Um, she is not a huge perfume collector. And I think it smells very much like what it's supposed to. So I think that's great. 
Um, I tested another one of the exfoliants and it is a really nice product too. So I think again, the price is right and really, really great. Um, I also ordered in another scent, a what they call a pumpkin butter. So a really kind of thick emollient um, body butter. And this is in Vice. And I've just, oh God, does that smell good? I forgot to look this up, darn it, to tell you exactly what's in it. Essentially, it's a really gorgeous coffee scent. Like one of the best I've smelled actually. Um, I would love to get this in perfume. I haven't ordered it yet, but Vice is tremendous if you like coffee. It's coffee without being too, too, too sweet. One of the issues I have with a lot of the coffee scents that are made today, like um, YSL's uh, Black Opium, is I hardly smell the coffee and I, I, don't, I don't get it. Um, this definitely smells like coffee, but it's just sweet enough to wear. Um, and it has a little earthiness to it. It's really nice. Um, I find this one especially unisex. Um, so Vice. Let's see, as far as the oils, I'm gonna to talk to you about my favorites first. Um, I was really excited because they have like three or four scents that have banana notes. And I know that banana is a scent that's not for everybody. In fact, I, I don't know many people who love it. My mom detested the smell of um, artificial banana or the taste of artificial banana, which I thought was crazy because those of us who love those banana popsicles in the summer, so good. Um, so I ordered two scents. I think they had three or four, but I ordered one called B Banana J Foster Cake and Hummingbird. Oh, gosh, I was so excited about this and remain excited about it. So when I was in college, um, I one of my good friends had grown up in the South um, and I love carrot cake, but I remember him saying, oh gosh, I have to make you my mother's hummingbird cake. And it is like the best, one of the best cakes I've ever had in my life. Um, I'm going to describe to you the scent because it, it captures basically what's in a hummingbird cake. So lightly spiced cake with um, pineapple, banana, pecans, it has vanilla frosting, honeysuckle blossom, and red currant nectar. So um, the the traditional cake wouldn't have honeysuckle blossom and red currant nectar, but those things add a depth to this. So this one was a great surprise for me. I thought this would be just cake, it, it, that it would be cake and sweet frosting. And I feel like a lot of houses have done that. Um, the frosting scent can usually get a little gacky or too sweet for me. This was a, a mind blow. This to me is not just purely a gourmand. The honeysuckle, the currant nectar, the red currant nectar, and then even some of the fruity things and the spice in the cake. This actually feels much more like an amber perfume to me. And then it's got those gourmand hints in it. I ordered a bottle. This is the other thing that I ordered a second bottle of when I placed my second order. Um, I ordered a full bottle of perfume of this because I was so crazy about it. Um, just amazing. So that's Hummingbird. In second place, I didn't order a full bottle of this. I, I might eventually. This is one I'll have to say, a few of these oils are like this and I would say perfume oils in general can be like this if you haven't ordered from niche houses or independent houses before. Um, sometimes they come off in the bottle completely different than they warm on your skin and also, a lot of small perfume makers, small house perfume makers will tell you you're really supposed to let the scents macerate or sit for at least a week or two, if not a month. Um, and I, this is one of those where I smelled it in the bottle and I almost, I was like, oh, I'm not going to like this. It's too, too sweet. And then I put a little on my skin the other day and within about 10 minutes, it was gorgeous. So these are the things that you would imagine that would be in Banana Foster. It's basically banana like a caramely scent and um, whiskey or, you know, some kind of liquor. Um, when this warms down though, again, it gets much more ambery and it's just a beautiful, it's one of those scents that I don't even know if somebody would pick out banana. I think they would just think that you have marvelously sweet skin. <laughs> like that is kind of what I get from this when it dries down. So banana J Foster cake is so gorgeous. Um, Let's see. One that was kind of a surprise to me is called 
caramelized infusion. And I ordered this thinking it would be a great layering scent. It's supposed to be basically like a brown sugar caramel with, um, what am I forgetting? I think a little bit of booze or something. Um, this one, man, is it interesting. I have another scent that smells like it. And that's the only reason I'm not, um, you know, crazy about it. Um, this smells there for those of you who like honey scents and I love honey scents. Um, there's a scent made by Sucre Bay named, uh, black honey. And then there's a, um, honey scent. Oh gosh. Who's it made by? There's a few that I have in my collection that get really skanky, frankly, like really right to the point of you smell part of the hive and it almost for me, for me, borders on body odor. <laughs> and um, for those of you who love and collect perfume, a lot of you I'm sure will know that in perfume, in perfumes over time, they're often animalic or kind of body odor or other kind of odors, um, scents that provide like a base to perfumes and provide a um, warm skin or hair effect or whatever. Um, this has that in nines. Like this is, who is this strong? I thought this was just going to be a sugary scent. I love it. If I didn't already own a few skanky honey scents and I love them, there are ones again that I will warn you when you first put it on your skin, you'll be like, oh my goodness. But like in a minute or two, it they get marvelous. Um, But this caramelized infusion, so I'll warn you and say, one, I think it's really skanky. <laughs> I love it, but it is. And, um, especially when you first wear it, you're going to have to probably let it dry down. So this is not to me just a sugary scent. Um, but I think it's really cool. And if I didn't own something like it, I would have grabbed it immediately. So one that I'm just going to admit I'm not crazy about, and I'm, I was really surprised by, and I, I think it's just a personal taste thing. I mean, usually it is with perfume. We all have different tastes and scent memories and experiences, but um, I don't know if this is pronounced Nelk or Nelke. It's N-E-L-K-E. -E. I ordered this and I thought it was going to be my favorite because I'm crazy about carnation. Not many people work with carnation anymore. Um, this was described as carnation's mahogany and anise. And so it also has anise. So I was like, oh, of course, it's going to be a win. Wow. This is one. When I smell it straight out of the bottle, I was like, I don't even know what it is. It, it doesn't smell like any of those things to me. It smells green, medicinal, and to a point of being, yeah, medicinal, like bright to a, oh, like I just was like, I don't know about this. I put some on my skin and I would say half an hour later, it still pretty much smelled like that. And I was like, I just think this is a skin chemistry thing or I don't like it. And this is the thing about oils about an hour later, but it did take that long the cloviness and the smell of carnation started to come out. And then the rest of the day, it really smelled like carnation. I personally am not willing to wait an hour and a half for that to come to my skin. Again, I, I do not say this is a warning in that uh, you could have a completely different experience for it and then or buy it. And as I'll say over and over again, this is relative and for me to test, I don't know, 15 products and there's only one that I'm not crazy about. That's a really, really good thing. So I can't say enough about this house. This one just didn't work for me personally. Uh, no, okay. So there are three more I haven't talked about that I got in sample size that I really, really liked. One is called, um, let's see. Hold please. Hmm. Can't find it in my awful handwriting. Um, Let's see. Okay. Moon dog is one. And this is another intersectional scent. Um, if I, so I am crazy about what used to be called oriental scents or ambers, warm kind of resinous scents, incense, things like that. This is one that I ordered thinking it was going to be very gourmand. And it's much more to me of like an old school amber. And I really, really love it. So in it, it's described as cracked coconut, sandalwood, nutmeg, and clove. Um, I thought it was going to be all coconut. Often when people work with coconut, that's kind of all you get. Um, this instead is a super, to me, woody, spicy, amber scent with a hint of coconut. So Moondog, really, really great. I have some other things, uh, Serge Lutin and um, some other scents that 
kind of remind me of this. And so I don't need it, but it's fabulous if you don't own anything like that. Moondog. One that I was not, another that I would say I'm not crazy about, but I get why people like it. I think it's a relatively new scent. Oh, so I should mention they have a current catalog, like a general catalog. That's most of it's available most of the time, but they also, it looks like they produce seasonal scents. I'm not sure if they do that for seasons a year, but this was from, I believe, a winter um, grouping. And, and so I'm surprised because anyway, to me, it's much brighter than something I typically wear in the winter. I'm going to describe it to you because I think a lot of people would like it. Um, it's called Rosy Cheeked, and the description is pink grapefruit, fir needles, juniper berries, rosemary, parsley, and winter lilies. I've been making handmade wreaths the last few days, and I'm working with a lot of different, like, junipery smelling greens or pine scented greens. Um, and I'm working also with dried citrus and some other things that are in this scent. And this to me just smells a little too, um, smells like my house right now. And I guess that's nice in some ways. My house tends to be aromatic for one reason or another. And so to me, this just doesn't smell enough like a perfume, if that makes sense. But I think a lot of people would like it. And what's interesting about it is it's not your typical kind of warm, winter scent. It's a bright winter scent. So maybe, especially on a day when you're having the doldrums, this might be great. So rosy cheeked. And then last is, um, satire. Um, and this is basically blood orange with, uh, blackened vanilla. Very interesting. This, to me, whatever the blackening effect is with the vanilla, I don't know if that means it's burned or, you know, all vanilla is black. So I'm not sure what they're getting at here. But anyway, um, this, this almost has a dirty kind of quality and I like that in a perfume. That, that was a surprise to me though, based on its notes and its description. Um, and whatever kind of, base notes going on. It smells truly dirty, almost like the earth, like soil or the ground. Um, so this is very interesting. It's not something I would wear every day. Um, but I think for those of you who are really, really into orange or vanilla, this is not your average creamsicle scent. It's kind of like a creamsicle with a really dirty base. It's very interesting. I would find this almost gothic smelling. So that's everything I ordered. Um, just to give you an idea of price and how reasonable this house is, I'm pretty sure, let's see, 30, this whole order was around $100, which I thought was just amazing. Um, so again, can't say enough good things about this house. I think it's tremendous. For the price, I cannot believe the quality. It's so good. And I have a, a few new loves that, again, I had to order immediately because they're so great. And then with my order, in addition to getting a second bottle of lavender pear anise cake and a full bottle of hummingbird, which is the kind of intersectional amber with sweet uh, carrot cake kind of feel, um, I also ordered a sample of their Turkish rose scent, which is like, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar, Turkish rose um, tends to be kind of like a gelée, like a um, gummy kind of candy with um, a powdered sugar coating that almost has like a marshmallowy effect with a little hint of rose. Um, so I can't wait to try that. That sounds really amazing. So I would love to know, have any of you experienced this house, heard about it? Have, has it been on your wish list? Have you tried anything by them? And what that I reviewed today smells or do you think would um, sound most interesting to you? Hope you're doing well. Talk soon and have a great weekend. Bye.